بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ بیلنس از اے پروگرام ویئر وی ٹرائی ٹو برنگ لائف اینڈ فیتھ ان ٹو اے اسٹیٹ آف الائنمنٹ سو دیٹ وی کین ڈسچارج آور ڈیوٹیز بوتھ ٹو دا کریٹر ایز ویل ایز ٹو آر فیلو ہیومن بینگس جوائننگ می ٹوڈے آر مائی ٹو گیسٹس آتیا نور طاہر صاحبہ السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ وعلیکم السلام ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ اینڈ رافیہ خلیل صاحبہ السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ وعلیکم السلام ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ Let me preface our discussion by starting uh, to read from a writing of the Promised Messiah Salam. He says, You should make a great effort to recognize that God in finding whom lies real salvation. That God appears to those who look for him with sincerity and love. He manifests himself to the one who becomes his. Those people who are absorbed and devoted to the pleasure of God become a manifestation of his miraculous powers. So most people think that the door to finding God is only open for special people. Perhaps these are leaders of faith, um, the elderly, pious people. But in fact, the door to finding God is open for anyone and everyone, provided they come to that search with a sincere heart and with prayers. That's absolutely right, Manaza. Because Allah Ta'ala himself tells us in Surah Al-Baqarah of the Holy Quran that when my servants ask thee about me, say, I am near. I answer the prayer of the supplicant when he prays to me. So Allah Ta'ala has left his door open for us. All we need to do is find it. Absolutely, Rafia. And Allah Ta'ala rewards us in remarkable ways when we turn towards him and search for him. There's a saying of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that when you approach God, He becomes your ears, your eyes, your hands and your feet. And there's a saying, a really famous one, that when you walk towards God, He comes running towards you. And you know, we see proof of this all the time. We see how Allah Ta'ala comes close to those pure individuals who have this thirst, this thirst to find Him. And I remember um, Hazur Ayyadullah Ta'ala mentioned in a Friday sermon about a lady from Gambia who went to a remote village looking for a, a cure for her foot pain. And when she was there, she just happened to watch MTA just by chance. And when she returned, God told her in a dream that the one who she had seen on MTA was indeed the one who she should follow. Mm-hmm. Yes, Satya, isn't it astonishing how yeah. Allah Ta'ala reveals himself to those pure individuals who could be living in the remotest part of the world, but because, as you said, they have this thirst yeah. to seek the truth, you know, a desire to find Allah Ta'ala, they're able to find him, especially at a time when the rest of the world is so engulfed in materialism and in search of worldly pursuits. Yes, absolutely, Rafia. And, um, We're so lucky that in this age, we have the writings of the promised Messiah to lead us away from all this worldliness and materialism and to teach us that we can actually all reach God. You know, the promised Messiah writes, go run to this fountain, go find this ruby that's worth laying down your life for. And Hazur alayhi salam is desperate for us all to benefit from this fountain of life. Hazur alayhi salam writes, how should I tell you this good news? What drum should I beat Mm -hmm. to make this announcement that this is our God? So I guess the most important question then is, what steps can the average person take to find God? How do we start? How do we find this uh, nearness? I think one of the ways, Manaza, um, is by adopting the colors of Allah. So what I mean by that is that part of our nature is that when we love someone, we try to imitate them and learn everything about them. So we see examples of that in children when they try to copy the, you know, their parents, um, the way they speak, yeah. their hand gestures. And little girls co- start covering their head because they've seen their mothers do it. So it follows then that when we love Allah Ta'ala, then we should do everything we can to learn everything about him. And who better to learn about Allah Ta'ala than from from Allah himself? And he has told us everything about him and how to attain his love in his own words in the Holy Quran. 
So in order to fully comprehend the majesty of Allah Ta'ala, we should recite the Holy Quran on a daily basis and make sure we read it with, you know, its translation and commentary. And then try to find ways on how we can, you know, become recipient of His love. And this can be done in ways that, you know, every day, just performing small deeds solely for the sake of Allah Ta'ala. And, you know, because we want to become, you know, recipient of His love. And Allah Ta'ala Himself tells us that these are the people who perform these daily deeds for my sake are the ones who are going to be, you know, able to attain my love. And He says in the Holy Quran is that, and they feed for the love of Him, the poor, the orphan, and the prisoner, saying, we feed you for Allah's sake only. We desire no reward nor thanks for, from you. So this tells us is that just by doing small deeds on a daily basis, we can become worthy of Allah's love. And Rafia, it's I think important to point out here that Hazur Ayyadullah Ta'ala bin Nasr Hill Aziz recently in his trip to USA has emphasized in the Friday sermons the role of good deeds in attaining the nearness to Allah Ta'ala. Hazur Ayyadullah Ta'ala bin Nasr Hill Aziz focused on the fact that you cannot have your prayers accepted. You cannot be close to Allah Ta'ala if you do not fulfill the rights of other human beings, hukuk al-ibad. And what particularly struck me about Hazur's message was the idea that the subtle sins that we don't even realize that we're entangled in, like gossiping, speaking, thinking ill of others, backbiting, complaining, gilishikwe, com as they say in Urdu, these practices prevent us from attaining closeness to God Almighty. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think another very important way is, of course, through our salat. Um, yes. You know, Allah the Almighty, uh, who is the creator of the universe, yeah. the king of the universe, he has given us this opportunity, not even once a day, but multiple times a day, to come and meet with him, an individual one-on-one -on -one mulaqat, an opportunity for us to get to know him, to speak to him, to talk to him, and to have our prayers heard and answered. And Allah Almighty promises that the person who approaches Salat uh, on time with punctuality and fulfills all of the other prescribed uh, prerequisites will surely uh, be able to meet God and will have his prayers answered, uh, inshallah. Yes, and I think after everything that you've just pointed out, I think it's so vitally important for us to appreciate these one-on-one -on -one appointments, these exclusive meetings with Allah Ta'ala. And we need to take full advantage of them. And I think the best way to do this is really to beautify our Salat. And I think the most important way to achieve this, to beautify our Salat, is really to offer it with proper concentration. So really getting into the right state of mind, being really mindful of what we're saying and pondering over the rich meanings of each word. And if we do feel that our attention is wandering, then we need to keep bringing it back. And I remember reading somewhere about the companions of the Holy Prophet وسلم, that they would be so absorbed and engrossed in their Salat that when they would finish, for a moment they didn't know where they were. And we certainly do need to prioritize the importance of Salat in our daily lives, like you said. I mean, if we think about it, the purpose of our creation is to worship Allah Almighty. Yeah. And what better way than to engage in our Salat with the proper mindset and concentration, as you said, um, and uh, make time for it and, and really dedicate ourselves to it during that time. Uh, yes, prioritize it, yes. Um, and I think another thing to remember is keep trying to attain pleasure mm -hmm. out of Salat. Don't give up. Mm -hmm. Just like the Promised Messiah salam, points out about the alcoholic who keeps on drinking until he is intoxicated. Mm -hmm. It's our duty to keep on praying until we reach that spiritual high. Mm -hmm. And the Promised Messiah salam, also gives the analogy that just as we take a bitter medicine, mm -hmm. you know, to get well, 
we should keep on praying and never give up. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people don't realize that there's different ways in which prayers are answered and accepted. Yeah. You know, sometimes we're praying for something and uh, Allah Almighty has accepted it, but the manifestation of that acceptance is prescribed for a lit later time, has been designated for a later time. So you don't see the result of that acceptance right away. Yeah. And sometimes we've been praying for something, Allah Almighty in His ultimate wisdom has deemed that this is not good for you. Mm -hmm. So He doesn't accept that prayer, but in return He rewards you with something even better. Actually, the Promised Messiah also has taught us that we should speak to Allah Ta'ala in our own simple language mm -hmm. so that we can be comfortable in making that connection with yeah. Allah Ta'ala. Our prayer should not be like a series of you know, physical movements that we do without thinking, just out of habit, but rather we should talk to Allah Ta'ala in a real, genuine way like we talk to a friend. Absolutely. And, and just to, uh, it, it reminds me of, um, of a writing of the Promised Messiah that I read in The Essence of Islam. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the Promised Messiah says that the dealing of God Almighty with the believers is like that of a friend. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he accepts their prayers and sometimes he imposes his own will upon them. And the same thing happens in a friendship. Sometimes one friend, uh, you know, acts accordingly to the wishes of his friend, accepts his uh, will, and sometimes he makes him ac accept what he himself wants. Yeah, it's such a beautiful analogy. And this reminds me of a story of Hazrat Musa alayhi salam and the shepherd. Once Hazrat Musa alayhi salam came across a shepherd who was sitting by the roadside removing lice from his clothes and muttering something under his breath. And Hazrat Musa alayhi salam approached him. And when he came closer, he realized that the shepherd was actually praying. And this is what he was praying. He was saying, oh my Lord, if you ever come to visit me, I'm going to take out the thorns from your feet, the lice from your clothes, and I'm going to give you milk to drink from my goats. Now when Hazrat Musa alayhi salam heard this, he could not contain his anger. And he shouted at the shepherd and said, who on earth are you to talk to Allah Ta'ala like that? Do you think he is like you, full of filth and lice? God is self-sufficient. He does not need any help, particularly from somebody like you. And, but however, before Hazrat Musa Islam could continue, he heard God's voice expressing his great displeasure at what he had said to the shepherd. God told Hazrat Musa alayhi salam that until he had interrupted, he had been greatly enjoying those simple, innocent expressions of love from his servant. Mm -hmm. And that's when Hazrat Musa alayhi salam realized his mistake and he fell to the ground, begging Allah Ta'ala for forgiveness for the way he had treated mm -hmm. his humble servant. Mm -hmm. Indeed, God does appreciate when his servants come to him and express themselves in simple language like you said. We are going to hear some thoughts on a different aspect of this topic, which is expression for, of our love for God through the virtue of sacrifice. Let's listen. A very important aspect of strengthening our bond with Allah is the essence of sacrifice. Perfect love for God is willingness to sacrifice everything for his sake. If you are not prepared to sacrifice, then the love of God you profess is only lip service. When a man passes through trials with patience and steadfastness out of love for his God, then these hardships will ultimately lead to his spiritual elevation. In today's world, Materialism is at its very height. These days, for someone to consider sacrificing their wishes and comforts is a strange phenomenon. In fact, an average person today would consider it outdated and irrelevant practice altogether. However, Allah the Almighty says in the Holy Quran, Chapter 3 Verse 93 Never shall you attain to righteousness unless you spend out of that which you love. 
And whatever you spend, Allah surely knows it well. Hazrat Khalifa al-Masih V, may Allah be his helper, explained in a Friday sermon. Every believer wishes to attain nearness by doing good. And God draws the attention of believers in this verse. That if you wish to do good, to seek God's pleasure, then remember, doing good requires sacrifice. Sacrifice of that which one loves, which benefits one, which brings one comfort. That is the real sacrifice. Welcome back. Reflecting further on what Sister Sumita just said, we actually find exemplary models of sacrifice when we examine the lives of the Holy Prophet and his companions at the time uh, when you know, the message of Islam had first come and Allah had commanded them to spread this message. And they were met with much persecution. One of the examples that comes to my mind is that of Hazrat Bilal Razila who was an African slave and he had accepted you know, Islam the moment he had heard the message. But his master, Umayyah bin Khalf, had you know, punished him on a daily basis because of it. And his you know, punishment was severe, that every day on, he would throw Hazrat Bilal on the burning sand and then put hot stones on his chest. And then he would sit on those stones and tell Hazrat Bilal Razila Tala Anho, to stop worshipping Allah and to worship the idols instead. Yeah. But Hazrat Bilal Razila Ta'ala Anhu, who was, you know, could barely speak much Arabic, he would just look up at the sky and say, Ahad, Ahad, that God is one. Mm -hmm. And this exercise was repeated over and over again. But they could not break the faith and love of this black slave for the one God. And Allah Ta'ala fully reciprocated this love by blessing him with the honor of the company of the Holy Prophet wasallam, and also giving him another honor of being the first one to call the azan, yeah. which is the Muslim call to prayer, and have his name revered in the hearts of people for all times. Yeah. And you know, Rafia, when you were just speaking about all the hardships, mm -hmm that Hazrat Bilal Razila Ta'ala Anhu had faced, it reminded me of a question that a child once asked Hazur Ayyadullah Ta'ala bin Asrahil Aziz. The child asked, Hazur, how do we know when we've passed a test or a trial from God? And Hazur Ayyadullah Ta'ala bin Asrahil Aziz gave the most beautiful answer and replied, if you are closer to God at the end of that trial, then it means that you've passed. And not only are they meaningless, but even if you have them, there's going to be no benefit in them for you because it's not blessed. Mm -hmm. And without the pleasure of God, there is no blessing in mm -hmm. it. Right. Now, coming to the concept of istighfar, um, you know, the promised Messiah says that those who are perfect in their love for God are constantly seeking forgiveness. Um, it keeps them humble, it purifies them uh, so that they can meet with God's acceptance. So actually, Manazza, the practice of istighfar is so important because the deeds that we do on a daily basis are not hidden in the sight of Allah. I mean, think of it this way. These days, most of, us, most of us have a handheld device, whether it's a tablet or an iPad or a phone, which has a camera. And we use this camera to take pictures or capture videos. And every time we turn on the camera, we put our best face forward because we don't want any of our negative actions or words to be recorded for others to see. But what we fail to realize is that the camera of Allah is always on, right? So realizing that fact that Allah Ta'ala is always watching us, we should adopt those characteristics that make us pure spiritually and also make our character attractive in such a way that brings harmony and contentment to our environment. And the other thing about reciting istighfar too is that we are appealing to Allah Almighty's attribute of al ghafur And if we ponder upon this attribute, um, the attribute of ghafariyat is a very comprehensive one. It has a very profound meaning. So it 
firstly erases the evil consequences of your past sins. Mm. It covers your present mistakes and then it protects you from future ones. Yes. So it's a all around type of comprehensive type of pos uh, po um, protection. And we know that the Holy Prophet وسلم, used to recite Astaghfar more than 70 times in one day. And you know, we are commanded in the Holy Quran to follow the example the perfect example of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Allah commands the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to say, if you love Allah, then follow me. Then will Allah love you and will forgive you your faults. Mm -hmm. Yes, Ati, actually this reminds me of something I had read about um, once some people had asked Hazrat Khalifa Tun Masih Awal, Razila Anhu, that how do you become the wali or friend of Allah? And Hazrat Khalifa al Masih uh, Awal Razila Talanho replied that my mother used to recite the Ruj Sharif while she fed me when I was little. So the people asked that, what should we do if our, if our mothers did not do that? And Hazrat Khalifa al Masih Razila Talanho replied that you should recite the Ruj Sharif while you eat. Mm -hmm. So this tells us that the path to reaching Allah Ta'ala, to attaining His love, is you know in the by following the example of his um, most beloved prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and um, we are you know well aware of the tradition of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, where he said that the the person who recites the Ru Sharif uh, has ten uh, sins forgiven, ten good deeds are added to his roster of actions and his spiritual status is elevated by 10 degrees. Mm -hmm. So this gives us an idea of how much blessing there is in reciting the Rushri frequently and abundantly. Mm -hmm. uh, this is such a vast topic, but uh, Alhamdulillah, we've been able to cover a lot of very good points today in our discussion, Jazakallah. It is our hope that through discussions like these, we can reflect upon our current state of spirituality examine ways to purify our faith further and to advance ourselves spiritually, establishing a real connection with Allah Almighty, inshallah. I will end with the prayer of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where he said, O oh Allah, grant me your love and the love of those who love you and the love of those deeds which will enable me to attain to your love. O oh Allah, Make your love dearer to me than my own life, my family, and even dearer to me than cold water is to a man dying of thirst in the scorching heat. Ameen, Allahumma ameen. Jazakum Allah ta'ala wa ahsan al jaza. And until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.